What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Colin Ross. I just recorded this whole video and realized my GH5 was out of focus and I feel like an idiot, but that is besides the point. If you saw my video from a few days ago, I have a new computer rig at the heart of that being the new Threadripper 16 core 32 thread processor. Today I'm going to give you some of my initial impressions and benchmark it against my old laptop. It's not an old laptop. It's still a beast. My laptop is an i7 2.5 gigahertz quad core mobile processor. So it's a beast. It also has a 980 m graphics card and 24 gigs of RAM and we're going to be putting it up to the test against the Threadripper which has 64 gigabytes of RAM, a 980 Ti and obviously the Threadripper processor inside. But first I just want to say I didn't always have this nice of technology. I definitely started at the bottom with this computer. I've seen a lot of comments on my video recently saying you know I want to save up so that I can start editing videos too. I mean that's a valid point. It's definitely a lot more fun to edit stuff on this compared to this. This is my old computer that I first started editing serious videos on. It's a Sony Vio and it has 256 megabytes of RAM, an Intel Pentium 4 processor. I just want to get the message out there that don't wait to create content because you're limited by your camera or your computer. You most likely have a phone that can shoot videos and edit videos on the phone that is way more powerful. I remember editing HD video on this like six years ago. Sony Vegas was the first program that I used and Sony Vegas would crash once every like hour. I literally was like control S, control S, control S, control S every second. I should fire this bad boy up and see if one, she fires up, and two, what old files I have on this god. Oh! But anyways, without any more further ado, let's get into the benchmarks of the Threadripper versus my laptop. The most important benchmark I was seeing about performance improvements was in 3D rendering. My software of choice is 3ds Max, and I opened up one of the scenes that comes included, the underwater scene. On both my laptop and the Threadripper, set it to HD 1080p and rendered a single frame. The laptop took 8 minutes and 11 seconds to render one frame of the scene, and the Threadripper took a minute and 30 seconds. To people who aren't into 3D rendering, this probably seems like, you know, it's just 5 minutes, like what's the big deal. The big deal is when you're rendering a hundred frame animation sequence, let's say you have a six minute time differential per frame. Granted, it'll vary from the complication of the scene. Let's say you have a six minute time differential between each frame and you're rendering a hundred frame animation. That is a 10 hour differential between my laptop and my computer for hundred frames. In some complex videos and animations, you could potentially have up to a thousand frames to render for a project. Seeing the time difference between my Threadripper and my laptop, while it does seem obvious why it would be such a huge performance increase. It pumps me up so much to see it because I'm super excited to start churning out more shorts with 3D rendered stuff on them. So to have this increase in efficiency alone just for, just in 3ds Max is super big to me and that makes the purchase almost worth it in of, in it of itself. I also just want to say these are the initial benchmarks. So the only thing testing today is rendering and rendering efficiency performance improvements. But next I opened Adobe Premiere Pro on both my Threadripper and my laptop and opened one of the recent projects I worked on where my girlfriend and I went to the Apple Orchard. It was a 4 minute 4k 20 four frames per second project that I was exporting at 50 megabits per second variable bit rate. I also just want to say this project had LUTs and film grain on it. Starting off with my laptop, it took 13 minutes for it to render a four minute sequence in 4K which is very impressive to have a laptop that has the ability to do that. And it just goes to show I wasn't trying to replace my Threadripper with my laptop. And it's super nice to know that I still have that type of computing power when I'm on the go, traveling, or if I am stuck at a Starbucks, what, whatever the case may be, knowing that I have that type of mobile computing power where, whenever I want it is super nice, especially when you're trying to upload daily and you never know exactly what's gonna go on. And the Threadripper churned through this in five minutes, which is insane. It's almost a third of the time that my laptop took to do it in. And I'm pumped because when I do make longer vlogs, whether that be like 10 to 13 minutes or if it's like a 13 minute tutorial, being able to render that so much faster, you know, if I save a third of the time, so what would take an hour to export on my laptop would only take 20 minutes on my Threadripper. I'm super pumped to see that performance increase. So the last thing that I tested out was proxies and I am a huge advocate of proxy workflow and I think Adobe Premiere makes it so easy and incredible. It's built right into the pipeline. With both of these computers, I proxied my computer build video, which was around 60 gigs of GH5 footage. Some was 4K 60, some was 4K 24, but it was around 60 gigabytes of footage and I proxied it at 1024 by 540 GoPro Cineform codec. And I was able to proxy 60 gigabytes of footage on my Threadripper in 14 minutes, which is crazy because the same project on my laptop took an hour and four minutes. But I just want to do this quick video talking about my initial benchmark performance and opinions on it from the Threadripper. It's also ironic, you know, just doing it sitting here with this good old Sony Vio. It's 
baby got me my start i'm super excited to test out some more benchmarks for you guys but yeah i hope you enjoyed this video as always leave a like if you did leave a dislike if you didn't and subscribe i'm trying to post every day for the rest of 2017 i'll see you guys tomorrow peace this thing is a compact mofo <laughs> it's gotta weigh like 30 pounds